Hello and welcome to the solution video for spicy question number 35. The first thing to notice in this question is that ABC is a right angle triangle and we have one side missing so we can use Pythagoras. So BC squared is 231 squared plus 108 squared. If you work out the right hand side here you get 65,025 and if you square root both sides you'll find that BC is 255 meters. So let's add that to the diagram. If we now add up all of the lengths of the perimeter of the triangle, we get the total length of one loop of the race. So 255 plus 231 plus 108 gives you a total perimeter of this triangle of 594 meters. Now I know this is a triangle, but it works the same if you imagine that the whole race is just one circular loop. So if we draw a circle like this and mark on the point A, we're told some information about the two runners and their speeds. So runner number one goes in a clockwise direction like this and runs at a speed of five meters per second and then runner number two goes anti-clockwise at a speed of four meters per second. Now by the time they meet each other, they will have completed one loop combined. But since runner number one runs at five meters per second and runner two runs at four meters per second, once they've completed one lap combined, runner number one will have done five ninths of the distance. So if we imagine that runner number one goes around five ninths of a loop and runner number two does four ninths of a loop, we end up with a situation like this. Now we know the perimeter of one whole loop, that's 594 meters, so if we do 5 ninths of that we'll find out how far runner 1 ran. That's this far here, and that's 330 meters. Runner number 2 would have done this much, and that's 4 ninths, which is 264 meters. So every time they pass each other, in total they've done one loop combined, and runner number 1 will do 330 meters, and runner number 2 will do 264 meters. Now let's return back to the triangle. So if we set them off with runner 1 going in a clockwise direction, they'll go like this. Now they've done 231 meters there, but we know they're going to do 330, so there's a bit more. And runner number 2 will go anti-clockwise like this, and they'll meet over here. Now we know this meeting point here, which we'll call D, is 5 ninths away around the triangle if you go in a clockwise direction. So if you do 330, take away 231, you find out the extra distance from B to D must be 99, and using a similar one from the other direction, you end up with D to C as 156. So now let's imagine both runners are here. Runner number one is going to continue going clockwise like this. And runner number two will go anti-clockwise like this. And they'll meet at this new point here, which is E. So runner number one has done 156 from D to C, and then 108 from C to A. And if you take those away from 330, you'll find out the distance from A to E must be 66. And with a similar calculation from the other direction, from E to B is 165. So now both runners are at point E. Runner number one has completed the lap, but runner number two is still on their first lap, and they'll continue running. So runner number one goes like this, and runner number two will continue like this, until they meet up here, which we'll call point F. If you do the same calculations as we've done previously, subtracting the lengths away from 330, you'll find the distance from D to F here is 66, and from F to C is 90. So we end up with this triangle here. Now if we look at the original triangle, remember it was a right angle triangle. We can easily calculate this angle here, which I've labelled x, using Sokotoa. So if we do inverse cos of 231 over 255, we find that angle, which is 25 point all of this degrees. So let's label that onto the diagram. Now I'm going to connect up the line from D to E next. And I'm going to look at the triangle BDE. And we're going to use the cosine rule to find the length of DE. So DE squared equals 165 squared plus 99 squared, take away two lots of 165 times 99 times cos of this angle that we just found. And if you type all of that in on the right hand side, you end up with this number. And then to get DE, just square root both sides and you get this. So the length of DE we've found, we can add that to our diagram. Now next we're going to find the angle at the top of this triangle, BDE. We're going to use the cosine rule again. And this time cos of BDE, will equal 99 squared plus 86.2 something squared, take away 165 squared, divided by 2 times 99 times 86.2, and so on. Now if you work out this right hand side, you get this. And to find angle BDE, you do inverse cos, and you end up with this. So it's 125.8 and so on degrees. So let's add the angle BDE to the diagram. And now we can find angle CDE by subtracting angle BDE from 180. So that would give us this angle here, at 54.16 and so on degrees. Now we can connect up E to F like this, and you can see for the perimeter that we're after, we've got DF and we've got DE, all we need to do now is find EF, and we're going to use the cosine rule once more. 
So this time, EF squared equals all of this. And if you type all of this into your calculator without rounding those numbers, you'll find that EF squared equals all of this. And if you square root both sides, you'll get EF as this. So we can add that to the diagram. And finally, to find the perimeter of this triangle DEF, we add up all of those sides. So we've got the side we just found, plus the 86.2 and so on from earlier, plus 66. And this gives you the total 223.7893 meters. Thank you for watching this video, I hope you found it useful. Check out the one I think you should watch next and subscribe so you don't miss out on future videos.